They have a lot of summer stuff out at the Dollar Tree right now, so let's make some fruit-themed DIYs. Watermelon is one of my favorite summer fruits, and I love all of the watermelon items they have at the Dollar Tree. I wanted to make a picnic caddy because my family gets together a lot over the summer, so I grabbed one of the watermelon-themed charger plates they have, and I also grabbed three of these coordinating glasses. I love the red color on them, and I really like the iridescent finish they have to them. Even though these glasses are pretty just how they are, I really wanted to lean into the watermelon theme. I started with some white chalk paint and I went about a third of the way up the glass or right where it started to curve. And I'm using this white chalk paint for part of my watermelon design, but I'm also using it as a primer because sometimes paint gets a little bit sheer and I want it to be more opaque on this glass. So I am gonna go in with some other colors, but I figured I would start with the white first to act as a base. I went around the outside of the glass and you can see here I wasn't trying to create a straight line I wanted it to flow a little bit better around the outside of the glass So there are some wiggles and some lumps and bumps, but I feel like it just made it more look more like a watermelon I gave each of my glasses two coats of the white chalk paint and after it was all dry, I went in with some green. I'm using the apple barrel paint here in a matte finish and this one is called Arbor Green. Now I'm gonna try my best to follow the same wiggle bumpy pattern that I did on the white coat, but I'm staying about an eighth of an inch down from the top. So the white is gonna act as the rind of the watermelon and now I'm painting on my dark green color. So you can see here, I'm just following the line as best as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because no watermelon is. And for all of the paints that I did, I did have to do two coats. So like I said, I gave it two coats of the white paint and then once my first coat of the green was in, I realized it looked a little streaky, which is okay because watermelon tends to be a little streaky, but I wanted more of a coverage. So I did go through with the same dark green and gave it a second coat. And like I said, I'm doing the same thing to all three of the glasses. You can see here, after my second coat of green dried, you could see some of the white through it, which I felt give it, gave it more of a realistic look. Then to create some of the lines in the watermelon, I went in with a lighter green color. This is also by Apple Barrel in a matte finish and it's called Crisp Green. I have a really flat paintbrush here and I'm just dabbing it into that lighter green color and I'm just pouncing it on to the bottom of my glass to create the stripes that a watermelon would naturally have. Now on the camera here, it looks a bit bright, but when the paint was all dry, that green did dull down a bit and it made it look more realistic. So you can see here, I did all three of my glasses like that, and since I've been handling them, they have some of the oils from my fingers on them. So before I went on to the next step, I just used some rubbing alcohol to remove all of their oils. Now I took my Sharpie paint pen in black, and I wanted to create a few seeds on my glass. So just doing a teardrop shape in different spots around the glass. I didn't try to do a pattern here. I was just making them as random as I could and I turned them in different directions and I spaced them out uneven so it would look more like a watermelon. I went about another third up of the glass. I didn't want to fill in the whole red section with seeds but I did want there to be a few on there to look like a real watermelon. After my paint was dry on all three of the glasses, I laid them out in the center of my plate and I wanted to use some E6000 here so that I would have a really strong bond between the two plastics. I also used some hot glue just to have that short term hold. So I went around where the raised part of the glass was where I knew it would touch the plate and that's where I'm putting my E6000. And then right in the very center of the glass is where I added my hot glue just so that it would have a quick hold. Then I placed everything back down on the charger plate so that it was in the center. I found these cute watermelon napkins at the Dollar Tree and they also had packs of plastic wear in a dark green and a light green that matched perfect. I've made these crisscross ribbon wreaths on my channel before, but I didn't have one for summer. So from the Dollar Tree, I grabbed two of their 14 inch wire wreath forms. 
I got three packs of Grogain ribbon, but there's actually 15 feet in each roll, so I only needed two of these. And then I also grabbed two of their orange stems. They had a bunch of different fruit themed stems this year in their flower department that I thought were so cute, and a couple other bunches of flowers. I was a little disappointed with the wreath forms at the Dollar Tree. I usually have some of these in my stash, but I was all out, so I had to get two new ones. And for whatever reason, all of the ones that they had at my Dollar Tree, the crossbars on the wreath were sticking really far out from the edges of the wreath, and I knew that would be a problem. So if your wreath forms are a little bit better quality, you won't have to do this step, but I did have to take my wire cutters and just snip off the excess around the outside so that those weren't sticking out. Then I needed to connect my two wreath forms together so that it would make more of a rounded shape on both sides. I always use the crossbar section as my point of reference when I'm attaching my two wreath forms. I use a little bit of hot glue right where those crossbars meet up just to hold that wreath in place temporarily. Then I use a piece of jute twine or a piece of yarn, anything that I have on hand, just to give it a quick tie right where those two bars meet. And I repeated that the whole way around at each intersection just to hold my two wreaths together. After both of my wreaths are connected, I start at one of those intersection points and on the back side, I add some hot glue and I put my ribbon over it. Then I just start winding my ribbon on a slight diagonal the whole way around the wreath. Every time I come to one of those intersection points, that's where I add more hot glue. I don't ever feel the need to add hot glue every time I wrap the ribbon around. So having those intersection points as a guide is a really great way to add your hot glue. And like I said, I am going on an angle and I'm trying to keep the spacing in between the ribbon as evenly as possible. I usually get about six wraps in between each section. Once I have my ribbon wrapped the whole way around the wreath going in one direction, then at the same point that I ended, I start again and I go back through wrapping in the other direction so that my ribbon crosses over the first row of ribbon that I added. So again, I do the same thing every time I come to an intersection, that's where I add more hot glue and I try to keep my ribbon as spaced out as evenly as possible, making sure that it crosses over that first wrap. After I have my whole wreath wrapped in my ribbon, I try to look for the section where maybe the ribbon didn't get quite as evenly spaced out. And that's usually where I'll concentrate all of my decorations. So you can see here on the bottom side of this wreath, that's kind of where the ribbon got a little bit wacky and was a little bit more spread out. So that's where I decided to add my fruits and my florals. To get prepped to decorate my wreath, I clipped off the extra stem that was on the bottom bunches of those oranges, but I left them intact so that they were nice and bundled together. But I did clip apart my white flower stems so that they were individual pieces. Then those two orange branches that I had, I lined the bottom of the stems up together and in the middle I added a little bit of hot glue and then secured it with some clear tape. And then because these are wired, I just started bending them so that they would fit the shape of the wreath form so that they would curve up slightly. I always like to decorate on the bottom side of my wreath, but if you prefer to do the top or the side, you can kind of make this however you like. I just always tend to decorate towards the bottom. Now that I have the shape of the orange branches how I liked it, then using some hot glue and some of that clear tape again, I just started filling in some of the gaps in between the oranges with those bunches of white flowers. And these white flowers I did get from the Dollar Tree also, and I thought they, lo they looked really good with the little oranges. Once I had everything in place on this orange and flower swag that I created, I wanted to cover up those raw edges of the stems in the center there just in case you would see them. So I took some hot glue, I added it to one side and then I just used some jute rope and I wrapped it until I got to the other side and all of the edges of those stems were covered up. I created a simple bow for my wreath by taking a length of ribbon and looping both of the sides in towards the center. And then I cut another piece to act as a second loop so that it would have a little bit more volume. I used some jute twine to tie the two loops in the center and I made sure that I had enough length on the jute twine so that I would be able to tie that around my wreath form for a little extra security. 
I added a little hot glue under that swag that I created for my wreath. And then once that was set, I laid the bow on top of it. And because I left those jute twine tails long enough, I was able to just wrap that jute twine around towards the back and give it a good tie to keep it in place. I did add hot glue under the jute twine so that as I tied that knot in, it would sink into the hot glue and hold it together. Pineapple drinking cups from the Dollar Tree really caught my eye and I wanted to turn them into some fun solar lights. Now I do want to give you a warning. If you go to the Dollar Tree and you find these cups, I would not recommend actually using them for drinking because as you can see here, the leaves that are on there and the straw are permanently attached into the lid of the cup. So I think if you were actually going to use these to drink, they would be really hard to clean. You'd have to you know, wet those leaves down and try to get that straw clean. So I think these are great for a DIY, but not really great for drinking. I grabbed two of the solar lights from the Dollar Tree also. They have a bunch of different finishes on the top, but I just went with the regular gray color. To get started on my pineapple solar lights, I'm using some white chalk paint and I'm doing a really thick coat all over the surface of my pineapple. I really took my time here because it is such a textured surface. I wanted to make sure that I got paint all over it and there wouldn't be any gaps and you wouldn't see any of the, the yellow coming through my white paint. After my first coat of paint had dried, I wanted to add a second coat, but instead of going back and forth and creating more brush strokes, I'm using a larger sort of chippy brush and I'm just pouncing it up and down on top of my pineapple. This will help eliminate some of the brush strokes from the first coat and it'll also help give it more of a ceramic or plaster look since this is a chalk paint. I needed to use the lid on my pineapple so that I could attach my solar light but because that straw was stuck in there, I had to cut the straw out but then once I did, I was able to remove those leaves from the straw so that I could use those also. Now the hole that's in the lid of the pineapple cup is not big enough to fit the base of the solar light through. So I just took my utility knife and I just started going around making small cuts and I was able to make that hole a little bit wider. This would have been a lot easier if I would have had a hot knife. It would have melted right through that plastic, but I was able to get the job done with just my utility knife. I wanted to use the leaves that came with the cup for on my solar lights, but I wasn't able to fit the light through the hole that's on the leaves. So I just used my scissors and I cut an X shape over the circle that was already there. It kind of looks like the X that you see on top of a fast food cup that you stick your straw through. Then I was able to put all of the pieces back together. I stuck, I took the stake out of the solar light because it was too tall for the size of the pineapple. And and then I ran the leaves up over the bottom of the solar light and pushed the whole thing through the top of my lid. And then on the underside, I added a little hot glue to hold everything in place. Now, because I added the solar light to the lid of this cup, it was going to make it a bit top heavy. And since I am going to keep these outside, I wanted to make sure that they wouldn't topple over in the wind. So I have some old decorative rocks laying around in this container, and I just added a good handful to the bottom of each cup to make sure that it was heavy enough. And then all I had to do was screw the top of the lid back onto my pineapple for my pineapple themed solar lights. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with me again today. Let me know in the comments what your favorite summer fruit is. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.